Welcome back to Evergreen Valley on Farming Simulator 22. Apologies for the delay. All will become apparent later in the episode. Uh, it's episode two with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, just a quick addition to the second episode here on Evergreen Valley. I developed a better method for picking up all these bales. <laughs> Soon as the um, auto stack baler thing wouldn't work, um, so I've just been stacking them up in twos. I think I'm gonna. I think I can extend these bell spikes even more. Uh, I was going to. Hmm, I don't know if this is gonna work. No, it's not, because I've gone for three prongs. Um, I was gonna come in from the side because I thought it'd pick them up easier, but I'll miss. It'll, it'll get one spike in the middle. That's not gonna work. So, in from the side, pick them all up, take them. I'm gonna take the rest of the bells off the field. I know at the end of the last episode I said that's what I was doing, but I thought I'd show this because you know, this is me changing the method. You know you. You do that, you'll find different ways of doing stuff, and as you start to do a particular job, whatever it might be, you'll suddenly think, I've got a better idea. So I've got some other jobs. I'm going to do a couple of, probably a little snippets of starts of jobs. I'm thinking about what production to look at first. I don't know, I can't remember whether or not we can buy... I'm sure we can buy the small coal mine without buying the entire land. Buying the entire land was simply to, um, just thinking, was it, I'm just thinking, was that simply to have access to the land to remove stuff? Anyway, I'd give that some thought. I decided I would go and get some more concentrate for our liquid fertilizer. Um, what I'm thinking, I might do a, a completely separate test. <laughs> I know. Um, where I spend the equivalent of buying one IBC of liquid fertiliser. Is that going? I'm not sure if some of the ones on their side will go. Yeah, so what I'll do, because it's 3,200 for 2,000 litres of liquid fertiliser, if I spend 3,200 on concentrate, put that all in and then run it, see how much we get because 3200 will buy us 2000 litres of con uh, 2000 litres of liquid fertilizer but what will 3200 of concentrate get us as far as liquid fertilizer is concerned i'm sure it'll work out all right um i need to tip these up on their end i think Anyway, I'm going to put the water in, going to get this running. Like I said, a few little snippets of bits and bobs. Just a few jobs I thought I'd uh, do off camera. Well, it's not off camera now, is it? Because I filmed it, but technically it was supposed to be.
It's 12.50 here in Evergreen Valley. I've been doing some cultivating with the cultivator we started with. And I'm utilising the stuff we started with. But, um, so what I'm doing, I'm, I'm trying to work out what to do next. What, what, <laughs> oh, where do I start? With the stuff we were given, the stuff we started with that was provided by the farm. And it's fine for getting started. You will find very quickly, depending on the size of fields and things you're doing, that certain bits of equipment may need to be upgraded. This is one of them. Um, this is currently, what's this, a five metre? I can't remember what this was now, something like that. Um, it's taken me quite a while to do the cultivating contract I was doing. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a different cultivator. Cultivator, disc harrow, we haven't made my mind up yet. I've got a few that we've got options on. A couple we've used before. Well, actually, might, I might have used all of them before. I wouldn't be surprised. We have got a worker working on our canola contract down on field 18. But I'm heading back into the town because I want to swap this out. The other thing as well is, again, with what we've got, where, where can we start? We need some way of making some money, bringing some money in. And yes, once we've got our field ready to go, we plant it again. And then we harvest it again and we can pick up contracts, which we are doing. We're going to make a bit of money doing that. But we've we've got um, oats and we've got barley in our silo now. The oats I'm going to use for making seed. The barley, we've got 28,000 litres. I could sell it, but barley's not worth a huge amount. Now, obviously, it becomes almost a false economy. You've got to look at, if I sell it as it is, I think it's paying about 450 for 1,000 litres. So I can sell the 28,000, I'll get about 14,000, a little bit under, fine. If I can turn it into flour, flour's going for about 900, but I've got to produce the flour first. If I turn that flour into bread, bread's going for about two and a half grand, but I've got to buy those productions. But once I've got them, moving forward, any more we do is all kind of, it's all money in the bank, really. So it's always that thing of, looking forward looking ahead at what we can potentially achieve if i just want to turn a quick profit if i just want to get rid of what i've got but well, the canola harvest i was thinking about keeping canola anything left over off the contract i was going to keep it um but i'm better off selling it at the moment we we need the money so i'm going to put in a little grain mill a little windmill grain mill there's an american one uh everything's in the description listed what i'm using i think everything is I'm going to put that in. So we're going to take the barley we've got, we're going to turn that into flour. I haven't decided what I'm going to do about bakery yet. There is a bakery in town, but that's 45 grand. Um, so I've got to decide what I'm going to do. But at least to start off, we can get some flour underway. I've also got a plan hmm, for... People aren't going to like it. For ploughing, kind of ploughing, subsoiling. I think it's going to work, but we'll give it a go. It's not overly expensive, but we'll try it again. I'm just trying to try a couple of different things. We've got workers working. I say worker, a worker working. Um, because we are, we've got taken over the farm, I guess, Evergreen Valley Farm. Um, and there are workers on the payroll already. So, yes, we are using some of our money, which we probably shouldn't be. So, we're going to drop this off. We're probably going to pay to get it repaired and whatever. This is only worth about 10 grand. So, what I'm trying to do is find one. And I've got a few options. Before I go in there, I'm going to show us in the menu. Every time we go into the menu, there's music playing. So, it proves a little bit trickier. Um, but we have got, I'm just, I'm just trying to remember who we've got them by. Um, Exoblode Modding, Ross Agro Tear, uh, who else? There's a few different ones. I'm also going to get one by um, Chris S. Rileyus. This is the one I'm, I'm not sure how people are going to react to it, but anyway, I'm going to drop this off. <laughs> we'll see in a minute. When we get back over to the farm, we'll sort out the, um, situation with um it's, it's like a little windmill i've used one before or on, on carpathian what else there's no matana one but this one's the, not an omatana one the one i'm going to use is bartson v3 i'm pretty sure the original one i used was standard and this one there's a us version and, and again you'll see in a minute but um, i'm going to sort this out now i could just stand there and look at this all day long And so, that's what I've gone for. I used one of these on um, Elmer, about a red version, and the same thing I've said before. 
bang for your buck 10 grand 9.4 meters um it's 9.4 or 9.8 whatever it works out i was just in the menu um why don't go for this one and not the um cultivator i was looking at the the um the russian sort of that, that style that um cultivator um the cultivator required 300 horsepower this required 180 so i just thought you know what we'll go with a disc arrow we'll use this this will make life a little bit easier and a bit quicker i'm gonna get over and finish off that contract oh i didn't buy the other bit of equipment did i bear with me a second so yeah this one is 9.8 isn't it i've gone for this now you're going to look and think are you insane now normally i go for a plow and i use the same ones all the time now this is chris s riley s this is a vineyard one um but this particular version the titan one this will go at 25 miles an hour so if i had one double the width or triple the width and i was running it at seven eight miles an hour this one this width at 25 miles an hour will equate to the same thing this cost three grand i didn't lease it i bought it three grand so it's a subsoil and not a plow we'll give it a go i'm only saying that because we're running precision farming if we go to our um farm oh that menu music let's move away from that music uh if we go to uh here and go to our farm we go to our precision farming we've got our farm there and you'll see our soil type and our ph level is pretty poor nitrogen pretty poor yield and we don't need half the field um but it does say as well on there requires plowing if we go to soil composition needs plowing it'll probably need well we'll be doing the ph anyway um so it needs plowing i'm going to do that anyway how's our worker going we can see our worker chugging away almost half of field 18 done i also took another contract on field 26 now to field 26 is going to take a lot longer if we go back across to there you'll see that's all we've got left to cultivate on field 25 but it was just it was taking forever so that's why i grabbed this so this is going to make life so much easier so what i want to do is get the um windmill in i want to try out that that little subsoil i mean at the end of the day like I say, it was three grand. If it if it doesn't work, or it turns out it's ridiculous, and I probably should have just gone for it. One of the plows that I generally use, um, the one that I missed, which was was it FS17? Was that V plow? There was that kind of, it was a flat plow, but it was in a V. That was quite cool. We never got that back again. I can't remember who that was by. But then I suppose because the very thin ones we've got now in game, the Lizard 6M, 9M. Um, and the one that I generally use as well by Rowley Christie. I prefer a flat plough to a mould board plough. I just like chisel ploughs, I prefer those kinds of things, but I, can, I feel I can just be a bit more precise with those. So let's get back up and get this going. Harvester will probably be full again. Um, so that field 18 has got to be delivered to the farmer's market in town. Our lorry is almost full, so we'll do a load into there. Like I said, anything we've got left over, we're just going to be selling it. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to be keeping hold of any of the canola. Field 25, when we come to do that one, I say it's a much bigger field that's going to take quite a bit longer. I don't know about that one. Again, it makes more sense if there's anything left over just to sell it, because we don't need canola at the moment. Oh, mind you, though, the windmill I'm putting in, does that do canola oil? I'm going to put the windmill in before we... There we go, full grain tank in. Um, I'm going to put the windmill in before we complete the contract. Because if we do, if we can do canola oil there, we'll do that. Because we can make a bit of money from that. It makes sense if we can do that. I can't remember if that one does. I know it does flour. It might do pig food as a byproduct. I can't remember. But um, again, it will, it will all help out. Anything we can do early on to help us make a bit of money to start building up, and as I've always said, and I will always say, you will reach a point at some point where you hit that tilt, that tip over point, where the snowball takes on its own momentum and you'll be, I mean, that's going to be way off. But like I say, I, I was looking at, I thought I'll go and buy, buy the coal mine, 450 grand. <laughs> we haven't got 450 grand, that's not going to work. Oh, this is going to be so much better, look at that. Oh, happy days, right. Now again, if you're playing this yourself, 
and if, if you sort of jump on and you decide I just want to I want to do the marble I want to make the, you know the marble blocks I want to have a go with the coal mine I want to do the coal stuff I want to produce the electricity or you can put money in you, you know you can do whatever you want to do it's entirely to you how you go about doing it isn't it that's the thing um, if I jump straight to that and go oh I've just put in two million I'm gonna buy the cut you know, the coal mine that you know doesn't go down so well so I have to sort of think a bit more about how do I gradually work up to it um, but not so gradually it takes me years because <laughs> that would drive me insane as well actually I'm going to swing over there we go. right let's go and sort out the harvester and then I'm going to put in that mill, I think. There you go. You can see the skyline a bit better now from over here. So we're taking our first load, first full load, 40,700 litres. Am I going to replace this trailer? Potentially. Again, this is what we started with. We were given it. So we're going to use it. We're taking this to the farmer's market. And this will give us an indication of how much is required to complete the contract. I think I can get around the back just down the side of the vehicle shop, I think. And then whiz back over, we'll put in the um, windmill. I can switch the, take the grain over and then hopefully by the time we've done all that, our harvester might be almost full, of, well no, it won't be full, I think it'll have done that half of the field. <laughs> the town, oh man. I love our bit. I love the variance in vehicles, the different equipment and machinery that's knocking around, flatbeds and lorries and different lorries with different cabs and it's just brilliant. I think we can go right around the back. I might still be set on the back. I can't remember now. So farmers market cell point is right around the back of here. There we go up here. I'm sure, this is where we're supposed to be heading. Oh no, no, no! Stop with the music. Right, I think we're in the back. I'm going to double check, like I've always said, make sure. So there's our farmer's market there. We go down to our contracts there. Field 18, farmer's market. Yes, right, so money shouldn't go up. <laughs> Please don't go up. Okay. We might have some left over. I'm just trying to think. This is going to work out over 50% delivered. And we haven't done... Have we done half the... Hmm. It's going to be close. Fifty-three percent delivered. I don't know if we've done half yet, you know. So we should have a little bit left over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the we over to the, the farm, we'll grab the bits we need to grab, put in our little windmill. I was thinking sawmill first, I thought sawmill was 100 grand, if we buy the sawmill we've got a few trees at the farm but not many and that was the problem. I thought if I spend 100 grand on the sawmill then cut down the trees I've got and it doesn't produce quite enough, plus a lot of the productions in town, well, most of the productions on the map require pallets, now I can buy pallets but I thought if I buy the sawmill we can produce pallets, which is a good good shout. But once I've used all the lumber on my land, I'm going to have to buy more land with trees on to be able to produce more. So that didn't seem like the best idea. Um, and the reason I'm putting my own grain mill in is because the grain mill here on the map, if you remember from the map tour, if you didn't watch the map tour, I think it's part of, but I might have put it as part of the um, playlist. Uh, I've got these trees down here and a few there, but they're not many, that's it, on the, on the farm. Have we got any over there? A couple. We've got plenty of grass around the outside, plenty. We've got some grass around the outside we can sell, which is great. But, um, yeah, the grain mill, which is just across the other side of the river, that's like 940 grand for the grain mill. Grain mills aren't normally that, I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not normally that expensive. That just seemed a little bit, a little bit over the top, if you ask me. Which you may not have been, but anyway, barley. Right, well that's loading. I'm thinking 
I'm going to put it over to the side here, probably out towards the river a little bit. I want it to be as cheap as possible. I think it's 20 grand for the, the yeah, for the um, windmill. So I'm going to put it, and this is pretty flat here, so somewhere around here. I'm not quite sure where yet, but you will see it appear. Um, unfortunately, I've lost my pop sound. Um, I've got to find it again. It disappeared. But anyway, bear with me. There we go. 20 grand on the nose. Once we put our stuff in, let's open that up. The lights here. Oh, very fancy. There's our production. Oh, we can. There we go. Look, look. Brilliant. Okay, so sunflower, canola, olive oil. We can do pig food if we want to do pig food. Have we got any byproducts? Oh, no, we can just produce pig food. So we can bring our barley into here. We'll get that running and get some flour going. Um, now, I know there are a couple of productions. There's some Omatana ones. If I wanted to go really kind of let's keep this as cheap as chips um there's the omatana productions i've used them quite a few times that's why i thought i'd go with a windmill something a little bit say a little bit different i've used windmills before as well it's difficult when you're three years down the cycle down the, you tend to use quite a bit of stuff you know um and yeah one of the omatana ones they're 10 grand the farm production pack is it 10 grand and it's it does everything and solve the the bakery production so i can produce the flour put it on distributing and it can distribute within itself to produce the bread all in one for 10 grand i could have done that i'll, I'll show you i'll go into the bill i didn't show you the other one but we'll go into factories just you know information showing everything else so that's what we just put in old american grain milk which is great because that does other products as well so even at 20 grand the fact i've got an oil mill there i can do pig food if i want to and i can do flour that's fantastic contract on field 25 is done brilliant um but these ones here uh where are we dairy fruits oil cereals they go past the bakery there we go bakery production um so that one there 10 grand and you can produce cake and stuff as well. You can do pasta and stuff in there as well. Now, I've used ones like this before. On, on Almar, I used the dairy one. But that one, I can with um, wheat and barley, I can produce flour. And then I can use that flour to make bread all within one building. So for 10 grand, I can do that. Um, and then also by Omitana, we've got... Where are we? So these ones. We've got farm production and all sorts. Oh, these ones here farm supply production you can do everything in that building i mean you can make animal feeds you can do all sorts of stuff mineral feed lime the whole lot and that's 20 grand so you know like i say I, there's different routes you can go down and different ways you can you can tackle it um i just thought you know what we'll get the flour going first and then i'll worry about the bakery side of thing. i mean even if i put one of those in i know it seems a bit daft but i could put one of those in for my bakery and have them as separate entities so one is my mill and one is my bakery that's still only going to put me at 30 grand for a grain mill and bakery but the grain mill and bakery does oil mill i can produce pasta i might do that i still might put one of those in actually but again i'd like to say I, I could have just done that building on its own and it would have been fine so what we'll do have i got my one minute that's interesting. My interactive zone markers are off, but that's showing. So maybe that shows anyway when you open that door up. So we can get that running straight away. So barley flour, let's get that going. Uh, that's going to be on storing anyway, so we'll have that storing. Actually, that's not going to take it all, is it? A little fill up what we got anyway. So that'll give us that. And if I do put the other building in, there we go. Uh, should I do it now anyway? So cultivating is complete. 13,000. Let's collect on that.
Is it worth me doing that? Just in case we don't have anything left over? Potentially. You know what? I'm going to accept the contract. If we don't do it, we can always just decide not to. Um, where are we going? That one's going to take ages, but we'll get into that. Right. Let's do that and that. I didn't notice. Let's close that down. Oh, it does. Well, there you go. That's quite cool. Saves you having to keep putting the um, the icons on. All right, I need to get back over to that harvest. I'm going to go and grab the. Um, I don't know. I, I want to try that. I don't know if it's going to work. The little vineyard thing it might just be one of those ridiculous things you think oh i'll give it a go and it's just an absolute nightmare i don't know but i need to get over and unload the harvester and carry on with that until we find our feet sometimes it can just be a bit of trial and error just sort of trying to find what works and as i've said before it's finding out on each map where that little you know where that little niche is where's the where's the thing that, that you like where's the thing that works where's the thing that's not overly expensive where's the thing that doesn't require a lot of inputs but can make you some money at least get it chugging away so you can be earning some some money fairly easily i guess you've still got to carry on doing your farming and everything else but at least you've got a bit of money coming in even if that just covers um yeah, even if that just pays for your um, worker fees, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's just finding that thing, you know? I was going to do what I always do, park there and walk over. Why? Is it just me? Is it, <laughs> It's one thing that really annoys me on films. I don't know if it, it could just be films, television series, anything like that. When people drive up to a house or a building or a place or an airport or wherever it might be, and they'll park miles away. They'll park on a driveway, miles from the front door. Or they'll park, pull up next to an aircraft, uh, you know, but miles away from it. You know, and it's, I never understand that. It's like, why haven't you driven closer? Well, you know, I know it's all kind of, kind of it's more theatrical and visually, you know, you've got that. I don't know, but it just, you know, you wouldn't, would you? You'd just park as close as you could. Was that just me? I don't know. Right. Almost full though. So yeah, I mean, we've done just over half. Delivered just over half. We'll see. We might have a little bit left over. If we have, then we'll get some canola oil on the way as well. And then with that production, we'll have a bit of money coming in. It's not going to be huge money, but it's a bit of money coming in. Okay, I only went and blooming did it. <laughs> I've put it in, done a little bit of landscaping around it. Um, so it's ready. On your marks, get set, bake. That's the plan. Look quite nice there, isn't it? Tucked in next to each other. A little bit of a track out of them. So yeah, this one should be as I say. So we can do spaghetti. That requires flour as well. I wonder what spaghetti sells for. It's interesting. It says spaghetti there and noodles that side. It doesn't matter, but that only requires flour. So I'd be curious to see what's worth more. Spaghetti, that's a one-to-one. -one. Bread is a two-to-one. If spaghetti's worth more, we might be better off doing spaghetti, you know. Yeah, so we could have produced the flour here. So we are producing up there, but my way of looking at it is, in that building that cost us 20 grand, we can do our flour, we are doing our flour, but we can also do oils, and we can also do pig food, if we want to. Um, we can do cake here as well, and the fact we've got spaghetti as a bonus, I'm going to have to check the prices on that, but that's pretty good. So if I do that wheat contract and we get any leftover on that wheat contract, even if it's a tiny little amount, I can put it in here. 
And if I set the wheat on here, no, actually, that's not going to. If I set the flour to distributing, I'm sure that's what it says you've got to do. So you produce your flour, set it to distributing, and then that will distribute it to make that. I think that's how it works. Um, so, yeah, it's um nice little cottage industry. I don't know how long it's going to take to get our first one of those. We're 110 litres already, so not too bad. So what I did was brought over the... Um, like I say, this is... This is nuts. It's nuts o'clock. I'm not quite sure what... what I, don't <laughs> I don't know why I thought of this. It just... Seemed like the right idea at the time. <laughs> but I'm now looking at this field thinking, what is wrong with me? My other consideration, of course, is do I... Make it completely circular. Because I don't technically need that track down to the irrigation system. I can go across the field with the irrigation system. So I could... And I, know, I suppose, realistically, it would have a track down to it. I honestly don't know if this, and this is going to work at all. But This goes at 25 miles now, but my tractor only goes at 24. <laughs> will it allow me to create fields? I don't know. And will it give me a plough? Oh, no, hang on. Is this going to work as a plough or not? I don't know. I mean, subsoiling generally, you get the ploughed state with a shallow cultivated texture. So my next check is to come to here. Go on to our growth, soil composition. That looks like it. There's a tiny little bit that side and this side. So now, because this will run at 25 miles an hour, Technically, oh no, go around in the circle though. If I do a few runs round, I mean, if it, even if I hired a worker at 25 miles an hour, does that just seem a bit daft? I don't know, might have been better off just getting a plow. I just thought I wanted to try something different, you know, <laughs> just, just give it a go. It will work, I mean, it is working. Let's go back to here. Yeah, look, it's taking it off around the outside. It's just going to take a silly amount of time. Though. Hey, it doesn't hurt to try these things out every now and again, does it? I mean, to be fair, we do have a um, quite a runoff, so I don't technically have to do a headland. Is it still a headland if it's a circle? I don't know. I suppose it is. Is it? I don't know. I mean, it has kind of worked. I mean, it has. I mean, not kind of worked. It has worked. Will this allow me to create fields? I'm just thinking. I might. I mean, it's not going to gain me a huge amount of crop, a huge amount of field. Will it allow me to create fields? No. So it's not. It doesn't work like a plow. That's interesting. I thought it might. No. Okay. But I think the thing about this being as well. It's cheap and doesn't require a massive amount of horsepower. So because of the speed, like I say, you can you're still gonna end up with this sort of similar result, but it hasn't cost you a huge amount of money and doesn't I mean I don't know my tractor has got enough horsepower to pull a bigger plow. But I can stick this on my John Deere, which has got less horsepower. I mean to be fair I could do that. But I just stick it on the John Deere now and just let that chug up and down. Have a look. Yeah, it's going. I think I will. I'm going to go and get the John Deere, let that run up and down. Just worried about, especially going around in circles, about missing bits, which I think I have around the edge a little bit. Might do another run around the edge. I suppose if I'd have got a plough as well, what I could have done was extended the field. 
so I could have made it a, a slightly larger circle if I wanted to and if, if circular irrigation is not your thing with a field like this I can change the shape of this field no problem at all I've got plenty of runoff I've got plenty of space so if I wanted to make this field bigger so the next time we put a crop in it we um, we get a, a better yield we get more from it anyway even if we do extra stuff to it you know once we've done our um, pH level we put our nitrogen nitrogen with precision farming I won't do my fertilizing until the crops in the ground because it needs to know what crops in the ground before it fertilizes and what we'll do is we'll bring the um, we'll bring the irrigation system off the field over to our liquid fertilizer tank that we've been running we'll top it off bring it back and let it run and will I continue like that I might not like I say I might change this field completely but at least to start off with I'm going to use what we've got right so let's raise that drop that I'm going to go and get the John Deere right but it is working that's the main thing it's 2.22 in the afternoon things have gone awry I alluded to it at the very start of the video they never mentioned it because all the start of the video was recorded at a different time um, I've got a few thanks to give out but also um, yeah I need to explain some things so it's kind of transparency time this is not the map I started out on in so much as um, I've had to re reset it <laughs> I've had an absolute nightmare. I'm like a disaster magnet. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, if you remember a few weeks ago, probably a month or so ago, if not a bit longer, Miss Silly P had a, an MS break and she was really struggling. So I brought my stuff indoors from the man cave studio indoors so I could make sure she was okay and I worked indoors. It wasn't ideal, wasn't comfortable. It was back to how I kind of started off doing my channel originally. Didn't have access to all my stuff around me like I normally do. So during that period... Um, I got an offer, and, and I'm explaining all this. this is my sort of personal, sort of you know, not my finances, but anyway, got an offer from my mobile phone provider. You know, you can add things onto your contract, like smartwatches and stuff like that. Offering PlayStation 5s, PlayStation 5 bundles, you can just add onto your monthly contract. So rather than paying for it outright in one go, you can pay monthly. Works out a little bit more over a couple of years, but it was an easier way of getting a, another PlayStation. So I thought at least that way, if anything happens like this again, I can have my PlayStation out in the man cave, my PS5, running, doing everything I normally do. If there's ever a problem, sometimes we've got deliveries coming. Two days ago, our washing machine packed up. One of my daughters, haha, oh, I'm not going to that, but I had to wait for the engineer to come, and you know. So I thought, you know what? I'll do it. So I'll have one indoors, one outside. It seems extravagant, it's over the top, but I want to thank all the people that donate, all the people that donate on PayPal monthly, I've said it before, um, all the people that do super chats and stickers and all, all the very different things, and the people that view, because you viewing is what gets ad revenue seen, is how I earn my money. Money that gets donated goes back into the channel, so paying for upgrades of things, paying for things when they break, um, I'm, my PC, I, that's a few years old now, my horror is if that goes wrong because that was not cheap um it's those kind of things you know it pays for the day-to-day -day running it pays for your monthly subscriptions to things that you need when you're you're running a channel so all the people that donate it helps pay for all those things so i thought doing it monthly is going to work out a great way of doing it so here's what then happened so i set it all up playstation indoors playstation out here but what i did initially was i had to connect them together so i could transfer or copy all of my data all of my saves everything of one playstation 5 onto the other great job done brought the playstation 5 out to the man cave left the one indoors all good so what i was doing some evenings i was going in uh, once i'd done all my videos and done mod reviews and map tours and that sort of stuff i'd go in have my dinner and what would normally happen is I'd have to come back out to the man cave if I wanted to just sit and play or, you know. So I thought, you know what, I can just put the PlayStation on now. And because I've been playing Expeditions, I've been doing a bit of Expeditions. Now, you've got the game cloud on PlayStation 5 and your PlayStation Network. And you can have it set to auto-sync. So it automatically saves your data up to the, the cloud on there. Then when you put it back in again, it brings it back down again. So, because I had the two PlayStations... I thought, well, that's all well and good, because if I play in there, it goes up to the cloud, I come out to the man cave, turn that one on, it will bring that information from the cloud onto the PlayStation, 
everyone's happy. Everything remains in equilibrium, but it didn't do that. I tried all different settings, couldn't get it to work. So in, in essence, I had two standalone systems. The PlayStation in the Man Cave was running, the PlayStation in, indoors was running, and never the twain shall meet. So yesterday, dry cams out to the washing machine. Um, so I waited indoors. So while I was waiting indoors, mods dropped. So I thought, okay, I'll do my mod review indoors, completely separate to the Man Cave. Did my mod review, all good, all happy, brilliant. Came out to the Man Cave this morning, turned on a PlayStation in the Man Cave, and both PlayStations had decided to sync. But they did a sync to the PlayStation indoors, not the PlayStation outdoors. And then the PlayStation saved. So the problem I've got now is, all of my stuff that I've done outside in the Man Cave, all of the prep work and a load of work I've done on my Mars mission map, hours and hours and hours and hours it's reset back to what the playstation indoors was showing i came out here didn't even have a save game on evergreen nothing so i've, <laughs> I've had to reset all of it so my concern now is is it going to do it again if i go indoors come outdoors is it going to keep doing it in which case i could potentially lose stuff or do i just fully isolate one turn off the auto sync system so it doesn't sync up to the cloud from indoors so my one outside stays but anyway i just wanted to explain that that's the situation that's why it's all changed which means my contracts i was part way through the contracts on field 18 i'd completed and had about four thousand liters of canola the contract on field 25 what was it it was field 26 um I was part way through doing the contract on field 26 because I come back, save's gone, all absolute disaster. So I reload everything, set everything up. Field 26 is no longer canola in it. <laughs> We've got red beet in it. So based on an extrapolation, the size of field seven was no 18. I had about 3,000 liters of canola left over, and then the, the size of field 26. I've allowed about 15,000 litres left over from both contracts of canola because I was fuming that I had it and that was the case. Anyway, my cultivating, my subsoiling is going really well. That's no problem at all. So what I'm going to do is unload the canola in and get some canola oil on, on the way. I've got my first flower has been produced here. Um, I reset everything as close to possible as I could. I think I changed one thing. I used a slightly different baler when I did the field because I had to redo it. So I've got more standard size bales. I have put jewelries on the back of this. I think I had at the previous save, so I've got jewelries on this now. And I changed out my um, bale spike for this one. Tall bale this one is, um, rather than the CSZ one. But as far as I can tell, everything else is exactly how it was um now as far as it goes for either baking bread or making spaghetti slash noodles i said about i was going to try and work out what the best option was going to be let's get this going so i know it's a lot of talking i just needed to explain it, it just yeah it just nightmare oh let's open the thing down why is that not there we go let's put the canola in so I set about the different prices and checking on them to see which one was going to work out the better option. So let's put canola oil on and we'll have that on storing as well. Brilliant. Um, so here's the thing. If we look at the recipes here, uh, not on this one, on the bakery, sorry, bakery production. So I said we can put the flour in, we can run spaghetti, just flour required, we can do bread just flour required but here's the difference the bread when it sells at the moment is selling for about 2200 for a pallet of bread but the recipe is a two to one which means the 28,000 litres of barley i'm using will equate to 14 pallets so i'll get 14,000 litres 14 pallets of bread roughly um at 2200 that comes in at 30,800 if I do bread and the recipe is 14,400 cycle, 14,440 cycles a month if I do the spaghetti slash noodles um, it's 2,400 cycles a month and it's a one-to-one -one. so the 28,000 litres of barley will give me 28,000 litres of spaghetti 
The spaghetti is something for 1,700 on average. Less than the bread, but on a one-to-one, -one, I'm not losing anything. If I sell 28,000 pallets, 28,000 litres of noodles, it comes in at 47,600. A gain of, well, 17 grand, just under 17,000. So I'm better off doing um, doing spaghetti. The extra bit of barley flour that I had left over when I put into the windmill, I did then put into the uh, bakery production. So that's now running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set spaghetti on to run. Um, and we'll see how we go with that. So that's that's our situation. That's where we're at. Where's the gate? I don't know if I pick these up by any can I? So these need to put over. Actually, what I can do now, I just wanted them to, to I wanted them to come out. Uh, what I will do, let's go back in here and let's set these uh, our flour to distributing as well. So now, any extra flour, let's get the door. Any flour over and above these two, which I'll move over there in a moment, will automatically go into our bakery. So we're getting baked. <laughs> I feel like a, I feel like it. Uh, anyway, that's enough waffling from me at the end of the video. I've got some fertilising contracts I've taken on. Where did I put them? There we go. Two fertilising. I have got a harvesting contract for wheat. It's only a small one. Um, but I've got two fertilising contracts. Um, probably because we've got our fertiliser lime spreader. Put the cover on. I'm probably going to buy some fertiliser, I guess. Um, we haven't got a huge amount of money at the moment. And that big contract... Because, all right, people might say, well, you wouldn't have got 15,000 litres of canola left over. But what I didn't get was paid for the contract. <laughs> so that was what 25 grand something like that was it for the contract um, I didn't get paid for the, for the I didn't take the payment for the field 18 one I've completed the contract had the canola for brilliant stuff when I come back and start recording again I'll show everyone look contract complete nope gone that was what was that 15 17 grand I can't remember so yeah I'm out of pocket by a little bit but it is what it is I've just got to carry on from where I am and carry on going and see what happens. I mean, that's <laughs> that's all we can do, really. I'm going to do my test in the next episode for the um, liquid fertilizer. Like I said, I'm going to buy. I'm going to spend an equivalent amount as I would do on a pallet of um, liquid fertilizer or an IBC, 3,200 on concentrate. We'll run that concentrate through and see how much we get. I think we'll get three times as much. I think it works out. It triples, um, as far as I can tell. But I, it doesn't hurt to do a test, does it, to see? So, uh, yeah, that's... Um, that's the situation. Now, I, I know people will message and they'll say, I to try, there'll be a 101 suggestions of things I should try to regain my save. I tried because, obviously, sometimes you get a discrepancy and it will come up saying um, there's an error it can't sync and it will ask you do you want to use your previous save from the cloud or previous save from the console so well, that's all right all i'll do is go into the settings and i'll just use the save from the console but it wouldn't let me access it i could sync all my data and if that that comes up you've got the option to but i couldn't find i mean, there probably is an option i probably missed it but anyway um so it's all reset now i've now got to finish this and i'm going to go into my mars map because i reckon i've probably got about four or five hours of work to do on there to get it back to where it was but um again like i say it is what it is i'm surprised that doesn't make a sound that airplane when it goes over but this is working really well i had a worker running on it so uh i, sh I shall continue so on that uh, that's the end of the episode hope you enjoyed it if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>